Hello crafty friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have a video for you today to show you how I created a seed packet shaker card from this free gift from Paper Craft Essentials magazine. This set includes a full-size embossing folder and sunflower stamp, a seed packet stamp, and some fun sentiments. And on the back of this is a template in case you want to cut your own seed packet templates from your own paper. The other bonus with this magazine is the 16-page paper pack. It includes some pattern papers, some of the pre-done seed packets, as well as some banners. And as you can see, more pattern paper, more seed packets, and so forth. So, we'll get started here. First, I started off by stamping the large sunflower stamp using my Misty. The ink I'm using is by Hero Arts. It's a shadow ink called Cup of Joe. Next, I moved on to the coloring phase using my Zig Real Clean Color brush markers. Started off with yellow to color the petals in the sunflower. After that, I moved on to the center of the flower, on which I used beige to fill that in so it wouldn't completely cover over the darker brown that I had stamped on. Next, I moved on to the leaves and stem. I started with the lighter color called light green. And once I had colored in the full leaf and stem, I wanted to go back with a slightly darker color in order to add some definition and depth to it. So I used a May Green to go back in, add a little bit of shadow on the leaves where the pre-drawn lines are. Next I moved on to the flower pot. Because I wanted a terracotta appearance, I discovered that Distress Oxide in Fired brick would be the best choice to get the color I was after. So after I stamped it using the color, I tried to find a real clean color brush marker that would match. But since I didn't find anything that really fit, I thought why not just go ahead, spritz some water on the same Distress Oxide ink onto a clear block, and then used a water brush pen to add that to the pots. And when it dries, it gives that great oxidized effect. It did it so well that I ended up stamping over it again because I lost some of the detail from the first stamp. So now, as you can see, brought some of that texture back to the pot. Next, I'm moving on to the phase of scan using the scan and cut in order to cut out the stamped images. So here I am uh, during the phase where I was making sure that it actually captured the outline of the images the way I wanted to have it cut out. And it did look like it was fine. So as you can see, I'm resizing uh, using those arrows to control uh, what areas that the machine is going to cut. So once I have that in place, I'm just going to click OK. And I'll just show kind of the beginning part of the machine feeding in and starting to do the cutting process. So here is one of the flowers after it's been cut out. Next, I'm moving on to the seed packet phase. So when I looked through this, I decided on this blue pattern paper, and I'm using one of my favorite things, stitched dies that closely fit the window. It wasn't exact, but pretty close. And as you can see, I'm angling it to make it go through the big shot easier when I do this die cut. Now that we've got the seed packet cut out, I need to score a line so that I can fold it into the shape that it's going to be before filling it with the shaker material. So I'm using a Martha Stewart scoring board in order to add that. And as you can see, when I flip that over, uh, the other side is not so pretty because it's actually the outside of the paper pack. So I have a way to fix this easily. Since I saved the piece that I die cut out earlier, I can just glue that back into the same space where it was cut out from, but it'll just be glued against the back of the paper so that I don't have an unsightly background as you're seeing right now. So as you can see, I'm using to the Tombow Multi Liquid Glue because it allows you a little bit of time to 
move things around and adjust it before it really sticks. Uh, once it does stick, it is a very good and strong adhesive. So next I'm preparing the seed packet. So I've taken a piece of clear acetate, made sure it's the right size to fit inside. And now I'm going to prepare the seed packet by stamping onto the acetate. Stays on opaque and white is a good choice here because it's the type of thing that's going to stamp well on a material like acetate and not smear. It dries very quickly in fact. So I use my Misty in order to get that stamped on. Now I'm moving on to the phase where I'm going to attach the acetate window to the inside of the seed packet. So I'm putting some double-sided tape as you can see, it's from iCraft. You can tear it real easily with your fingers, or you could just cut it if you need it to be very precise. So I attached the two sides and kind of peeled back a couple of the edges. And the reason I did that is because I need to overlap at the corners. And once you've put the tape over on top of itself, it's almost impossible to remove the backing if you leave it there. So now I have the acetate in place and since I'm not going to see the back of this packet it really doesn't matter how I glue it together I'm using my zig a uh, glue pen two-way glue pen to seal that together and then I had some micro beads from recollections this is something I believe I picked up at Michaels and I added some of this dark turquoise color and now I'm going to glue the top of the seed packet so that my seeds are held in place. So you just have to be careful uh, when you're doing this so that you don't lose any of the seeds, well, the seeds, the little beads that you've put in. Now I'm moving over to how I'm going to construct the card. And I decided a piece of craft card would be pretty cool to put in, in as one of my layers. So I'm running this through my Big Shot, and now I have an embossed panel in Craft, and now I'm getting the idea of how this is going to go together. So I pulled out one of the pattern papers from the pack, and I'm cutting it down so that it's about a quarter inch smaller on each side on the A2 sized card, that, card base. And now I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to place all these items so that I can see the overall effect. So I decided to take the embossed panel and the dry embossed panel and cut it down about an inch or so so that it would be off to the right hand side. And once I do that, I'm going to start layering the pieces together and finish the construction of the card. So the next thing I'll do is layer on the pattern panel, then the embossed panel, then the seed packet, and then finally the flower and the pot that it goes on. So here I am doing the using my double-sided ATG gun to add some adhesive. Place that panel on. I'm going to move on to the embossed panel and add that. And then when I get to the seed packet, I'm going to switch to the Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive. I like this better for a bulky item like this because I, I just feel like it sticks better than when I try to use something like a double-sided adhesive like I do on just plain card layers, paper layers. So now that that's added, I'm going to do the same thing with the sunflower and the pot, except before I add the pot at the bottom, I'm going to pop it up on some double-sided foam adhesive tape before adding it, since the flower is going to end, as you see the stem is at the end of the packet, and that way I won't have the pot flat and looking kind of odd by being against the paper instead of in line or just above the seed packet. So I trimmed out that piece of foam tape, added it to the pot, and then adhered it to the card, just slightly overlapping the bottom of the stem. And last, I'm going to work on the sentiment. 
I lined up the sentiment on my craft mat then picked it up with a clear acrylic block. Next I'm going to stamp this with Versamark sticky ink onto a piece of vellum. And once I've done that I'm going to add some gold embossing powder and then I'm going to die cut the piece of vellum to put onto the final card. Now I'm die cutting the vellum so that I have the sentiment prepared to add to the card. And once that's done, I'm using some Ranger Multimat Medium. I'm adding a little bit in the corner because I'm going to tuck it behind the sunflower. And so that I'm not completely putting, you know, adhering it flat against the card, I just applied a couple of dots and then pressed that down. Next, I chose a sentiment from the set to add to the inside of the card. I'd already pre-cut a piece of white cardstock to a smaller size than a larger panel of the pattern paper that I'd used on the outside of the card. So I'm inking up the stamp with the Cup of Joe Hero Arts ink that I used earlier when I stamped the sunflower. Stamping that onto the white cardstock, then I'm going to glue that down to the inside of the card to complete the inside decoration. And I took a moment here to stop and shake the little seed packet just because it was fun. Now the final phase of my project is to create a coordinating envelope. So I pulled out my We Are Memory Keepers punch board for envelopes. And first I'm cutting the outer part of the envelope in the same craft, although it is a lighter weight. I believe this is a 65 pound craft cardstock that I'm using here to create the envelope with. So as you can see, I kept moving it around and notching it, then scoring it at the indicated spots according to the measurements that are given on this board. Then I'm going to create a liner from the same pattern paper I've been using on the project and I went with a size that was at least an inch smaller than the brown envelope that I just created so that it will fit inside and be smaller than the envelope as you can see. Now I'm going around and rounding the corners on the envelope, or at least I did two sides on the opposite. Then I cut it in half so that I have two liners so I can save the other one for another project. And then I'll glue this one down. And the easiest way to get that done is just fold that flap over and apply some liquid adhesive and then press it to the top, making sure it's lined up with that crease right there and I decided to go ahead and add just a little bit of adhesive to keep keep it down on the inside and then finally I'm going to add adhesive to the flaps of the envelope and glue that together and my final touch to the envelope is to stamp the sunflower down in the corner with the same brown ink I've been using and now I have a coordinating envelope thank you for joining me today please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any future episodes. Thank you.